and a happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Before we get started, I feel God is putting my spirit to all the fathers to stand up where you're at. And the Lord has allowed me to pray over you before the message began. So of all the fathers and fathers who try and wants to be a daddy one day, an uncle who has touched the lives of his nieces and nephew, uh, a, 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 a mentor, amen, standing up all over the place, amen, because I want to just let you know that you are king, amen, you are the king that God has established in the earth. Father God, we come before you today, Lord Jesus giving you praise, honor, and glory, recognizing, God, that you are supreme and there is no God above you. You have established this man in the earth. You have called them as your own, God. And now, Lord God, I call upon you right now through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to touch every man's soul in this church, Father God. I ask, Father God, that you would lead and guide them, Father God, into all truth, Father God. No matter the circumstances that they have faced or going to face in the future, Lord, I ask right now in the Holy Ghost that you would touch them, Father God, with your finger of love. Empower them, God, to stand and to go forth and to do your will, Father God. And Satan, I speak to you right now and declare and decree before the almighty God that you will not touch not one single male in this church for they are called and they are soldiers in the army of God. I pray right now, dear Lord, that you will equip them, God, to stand as fathers as you have called them to be, Lord, that no weapons that formed against them will prosper, God, and that every nasty word that's spoken against them in judgment be condemned, Father. For they are your kings. And Lord, I thank you right now that the blood of Jesus has redeemed them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, I ask right now that as I come to stand before your people today, that you will hide me behind the veil, Father. I pray your special anointing, Father God, to fall fresh on me, God. That when I open up my mouth, Father, it will proclaim your truth, Father God. That there will be yokes destroyed and burdens removed, Father God. Let your empowerment of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding flow in me, God. That I not take your word out of contact, Father. But let it would go forth and do what you have set it out to do, Father. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. It was nervous coming up these stairs, y'all. Thank you, Pastor William, for your assistance. Because I told the men in the back, no, nah, I'm going to stay right down the floor. Because I ain't trying to climb no stairs, amen. But when the pastor say you're going to have to do it, amen, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. I won't hold you too long, praise God. And amen. Amen, Jesus. But now he might decide to do something different. But I'm going to let him have his way today, amen. But today, today my scripture reading will be coming from the Proverbs, amen. The fourth chapter, verse 20 through the 27th verse from the New Revised Standard Version. And it reads, my child, be attentive to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, and do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech, and put devious talk far from you. 
Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Keep straight the path of your feet and all your ways will be sure. Do not sway to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. The title of this message that God has blessed me with this morning is Fathers, Guard Your Life. And I'm going to need you all to repeat that. Say, Fathers, Guard Your Life. Amen. Now, since the beginning of creation, God has established the foundation of humanity, especially fathers. Now, in the book of Genesis, God did an amazing thing. He created humanity in his image and in his likeness. You see, it says, so God created humankind in his image, and in the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, uh, bring it under control and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God created humanity. You see, as frail, fearful, and totally dependent, yet there's something about us that no other creature, a created thing has. The image of God, his likeness, with the command to rule. You see, when God completed the universe, he said it was good. But after creating humanity, he said it was very good. Amen? So, men, men of God, <laughs> I stopped by for just a little while to remind you that you were created in the image of God. So guard your life. You would be able to be a, a solid foundation to love, to protect, to provide, and proclaim God's promises of security for your children. Amen, Jesus? Now, when I was a little girl, maybe between the ages of four and six, I thought my dad was a giant because when he stood up, it looks as though his head could reach the ceiling of our little apartment. And when he spoke, not shouting, to me his voice commanded attention. And when he laughed, I thought the floors underneath my feet was moving. You knew he had the authority even though he was in a wheelchair most of the time. My siblings would say to me that I was my dad's favorite, but to me, he was my hero. To me, he would never let anyone hurt me. To me, he would listen to me when I would walk up a hill and cross a major highway and walk through a wooded area to the place that would eventually become his home until he left me on March 25th, 1973. You see, my father had to be in a place, in this place called the convalescent home because my mom could no longer take care of him. And I was 12 years old when he left me. But to me, he was my superhero. And he gave me some good advice about boys, especially the ones that I would one day marry. Amen, Jesus. He could say, hey, baby girl, never let someone steal your worth. And keep your integrity. Stay true to yourself. Never let a man strip you of what's good inside of you. I found out later in life that my dad was not always a good husband, nor did he always set the best examples of being a great father. I can remember him sitting on the side of the bed with his head, hands folded and his head down praying. It is this image of my dad 
I will hold dear in my heart. You see, I'm sure some of us can tell some good stories about your dad, but for some of you, your dad was different. Some of your memories are cloudy. Some of you, you know, have feelings of anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, and hurt. And some of you never knew who your daddy was. You never had a good example of what fatherhood looks like or even feels like. I'm just sitting here to remind you, men of God, that God is your father just as he is the father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And he has proclaimed it to the world, according to Matthew chapter 3 and 17, which he said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Amen? Now you might say, well, okay, guard your life. But I want to stop by and just give you some few pointers of what he gave me. Amen? You see, I was reading one day in my devotional, and I ran across this quote that stated, Fathers, how do we stand strong when we are still trying to fight our way at the same time? Have you ever asked that question? There's so much going on. Sometimes, God, I just don't do it right. Sometimes. But I stopped by to say, to guard your life. How, you might say? The first thing you have to do is guard your heart. See, according to verse 23, guard your heart above anything else you have because it can determine the kind of life you will live. Can I get an amen? See, the heart is the main control of the human life. A wrong heart always produces a wrong life. So to allow sin in our hearts can pollute the entire life. Can I get a witness? We all have struggled in that area, amen? We all have allowed sin to enter into our heart because of wrong choices, amen? Letting our heart lead us in a direction that God has not called us to, amen? So we must remember that the heart is the main control of a human's life. The other thing you must guard your life is guard your mouth. Amen. See, verse 24 said, as Solomon warns, he warns us to guard our lips because it can get us into sin. You see, the heart controls the tongue according to Luke chapter 6, verse 45. It says, the good person out of the good treasures of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasures produces evil. For it is our, it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. So a guarded heart should result, result in a guarded lip. Amen? Amen. Well, I was reading Weipster expository one day and it says something to this effect it said a forward mouth is a proud mouth a mouth that speaks scornfully and arrogantly a Christian words must always be spoken in love and seasoned with salt amen I think we all can understand that right The third point I want to point out to you is guard, guard your eyes. Verse 25 says, hmm, we must guard our eyes to be sure that we are keeping them on Jesus Christ and the goal he has for us. You see, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of 
the joy that was set before him endured the cross and disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Now Philippians tell us that, um, beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. It says, I press on toward the gold for the prize of the heavenly calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, man, I stopped by to tell you, whatever happened yesterday doesn't have to be your problem today. Amen. We all bear some battle scars, some things that we should not have to as a child. I said something to some students at school, and um, a couple of them have graduated. They're going on to high school now, Pastor. And I had one boy tell me, he was, little girl was talking about how excited she was that her dad was coming and seeing, and he said, so? And she said, why you say so? He said, nobody cares. So I could see that he was very upset. And he was an eighth grader. And I looked at him. I said, I'm going to talk to you in a little bit. We're going to go have our little walk. So a few minutes later, I took him walk him. I said, so-and-so, why are you so bitter toward her? He said, she always bragging about her daddy. I said, well, what's wrong with that? He said, I don't have a daddy. And instead of me getting angry with him, Pastor, I looked at him and tears just flowed down my face. And I sit there and I said, I, I will hug you if I, if I could, but, I, you know, I don't want to get in trouble. I said, but my heart aches for you. He said, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what anybody say. He ain't never done nothing for me anyway. And I said to him, I said, but I care. And your mama care. And we want to see you do the very best. And even though your earthly father is not here, there's somebody greater that's watching over you. So I stopped by to tell you, don't let the dead spirit of your father keep you in the pit of destruction. So many times we have allowed the, the, the things that has happened to us in the past dictate our present in how we treat our own children. But you see, a, God, a man or a father that guards his heart is going to seek the presence and the will of God. Amen? So I wanted him to know that. But the other things we have to remind ourselves about guarding our eyes is that, you know, just like in, um, in Samuel, when David saw Bathsheba on the roof bathing, when he should have been out at war, he was at home. And because he let his eyes wander, it led him into a sinful act. And he took another woman's husband's wife, took another husband's wife and lay with her and caused her to be pregnant. You see, he took his position of authority and thought it was okay to do whatever he wanted to do. But God had to quickly remind him, I, I would have given you anything you asked, David. But it was not your place to take something that was not yours. And because you did such a thing, judgment and the sword is in your house. So because he did those things, he lost a newborn baby. And he had to deal with the dysfunctional behavior of his sons, Absalom. And the other son, I forget his name, forgive me. But because of the acts 
adoption of the Father, when not dealt with, it can trickle down and become the behavior of the child. God, your eyes. Just like in the Garden of Eden, when Eve saw the fruit, all she could think about, Sister CJ, was how pleasant it looked. And what I can do with it, that's a woman though. Amen. But not one time did she think about this is wrong. This is going to lead me out of the will of God. It's okay. It don't look bad. You know, it's all right. It ain't hurt nobody. It didn't cost me a whole lot. Amen, Jesus. i skip over that rent for just a minute and go get me some hair. A man, I'll skip it for just a minute and take care of what I need at the golf course. You notice I looked over there, right? Amen, Jesus. Not just the golf course. Amen. I ain't going to call the roll. Amen, Jesus. Guard your eyes. These things can lead you into a situation that some people never recover from. And I'm talking about Christian fathers here, okay? The next thing I want to tell you, and next point is, examine your life to see where you are going. See, the Lord examines your life according to Proverbs 5 and 21 when he says, For human ways are under the eyes of the Lord, and he examines all their path. What type of example are you living before your children, your grandchildren, your school children, and your church children? The other day I was fortunate enough to watch, and I normally never be on, on uh, the TV show and watch Oprah Rimp and nothing against her. I just don't watch TV that much. But this particular time, I happened to be watching it, and it was interviewing black fathers. And the interview was talking about the black father being the king. Amen? And one of the fathers that they interviewed said, a heart full of grace. Amen? And a love generates love. I'm sorry. A heart full of grace. Amen. Can he read my own handwriting? And love generates love. Grace and mercy, that's it, generates love. Amen. See, when you don't have that in your heart, you cannot share it with anybody else. You walk around like you feel like you got to prove yourself. But one of the things these men talked about in being a great father was that they had to allow their children whom God had given them to be who they are and not try to make them who I want them to be. Now, it's nothing wrong with God and your kids in the right that the Bible tells us that. But sometimes we have expectation for our children that are up here that they can never meet. And so when they disappoint us, amen, instead of speaking words of life, we destroy them with our mouth. We forget to direct their purpose. We forget to let them guide along the way because we want to control every aspect of their life. We forgot what it felt like when mama or daddy was trying to tell us something, amen? How quickly we forget. We wanted to go our own way, amen, and do our own thing because they just don't get it. But how funny God has a sense of humor. Because he give us children so that we can sound like our parents. Amen? Can I get a witness? I know y'all have said some stuff that said, oh, I sound just like my mama. 
Well, I sound just like my dad. I said I wasn't going to say that no more. I said I wasn't going to. See, you know what? But God has a sense of humor. And he reminds us what he had to do to get us through the process. And we fell off a lot of time. You see what I'm saying? But he said a righteous man may fall how many times? Seven times. But he'll get back up. The process. Where are you going? What are you doing? What is your purpose? So I want to say I was, I was looking at this and I want to tell you, 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 man, guard your life, men of God. Do not let the dead spirit of your earthly father's absence or his abuse define you or put you in the pit of despair. Let the love of Christ dictate your future. I was sitting here and Jeff, I was, Jeff you know, I, I want to do an acronym, you know. And he was like, man, I hate acronyms, you know, and stuff like that. And I was like, well, you know, I just feel like I need to do this. He's like, okay, you know. So I was reading it, and I remember something T.D. Jakes said some while ago. I mean, you know, my, my memory ain't that great, but praise God for a sound mind. So I'm going to spell out Father, starting with the letter F, meaning the foundation. See, according to Luke chapter 6, it said, build your foundation on the rock of Christ. See, in order for any father to be a great father in the eyes of God, you must first build your foundation of provision for your family. Right? You must build your foundation of, of proclaiming your kids. You know, it's amazing to me that I see some of these dads at a football game, a basketball game, and when they kids, they were like, go, Johnny, go do this. But when it comes to parent-teacher conference, we don't see them. When they fail in class, I don't know where you at. Or you've been an absentee daddy for so long that as soon as they make it famous, here you come out of the woodwork. That's my son. What kind of foundation are you building? Build your foundation on the rock of Christ. And that foundation is a provider. Don't forget that. That foundation is a promoter, just like God did with Jesus when he came up out of the water for baptism. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Build that foundation of prayer because prayer is the most important thing. As I shared with you earlier, the one thing that would stay in my mind from here until Jesus take me home is seeing my daddy sit on the side of the bed with his hand folded in prayer and his head down. And I knew he was praying. And that stayed with me. Nothing else he could have did mattered. But that was the one constant that showed me that's the most important thing for me. A, affirmation. See, again, affirmation is affirming, saying, this is my son, whom I will be, or my daughter. Pa Father, encourage your children. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them how good they are. Don't point out every bad thing they do. You know, they teach us in, the, in, in jobs when we send out an email Read it over four or five times, right, before you send it out. Because you want to start out with encouragement. You don't want to tear somebody down. Affirm. Let them know how much they're loved. Let them know they are mine. You are mine, and I love you. The next is teach. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, Train children in the right way. When they mature, they will not stray. I think every one of us in this room can testify of that truth because not everybody here always walked with God and was brought up in the church, amen. Some of us were dragged to the church, amen. 
Some of them had to be in the church from Sunday morning all the way to Sunday night. But you had the word of God, right, embedded into you. Now look at where you are now. A whole lot of folks didn't have a whole lot of confidence in some of us. They already knew what our future was going to be according to them. But look what God has done. Your testimony today is an evidence that if you build, if you train them up in the way that they should go, no matter what happened when they get old, when they mature, they will return. H, heritage. Psalms 127 and 3 say, Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb. Just in case somebody didn't tell you, men, you are a heritage from the Lord. Sons, you are a heritage from the Lord. Daughters, you are a heritage from the Lord. E, examples. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 says, be imitators of Christ. And Titus 2 and 7 say, show yourself in all respect to be a model of good works and in all teaching show integrity and dignity. Amen? And last, R, respect. Proverbs 23 and 22 say, listen, your father who gave you life Listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. And as part of the Decalogue, we always say, but in Exodus 20, 12, say, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the Lord, in the land of the Lord, your God, which he has given you. Ephesians 6 and 4 say, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger for bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. I just want to say this one thing when I was thinking about this. Sometimes we don't really know how blessed we are uh, with our dad until they're gone. See, we don't understand that he has protected us from storms of life. We don't understand that he was the one standing in front of the wind and standing in between the wind and us to keep us from danger. We don't realize it until daddy is gone. And then we say, wow, I didn't realize he was carrying all that stuff. Now I know why he worked two or three jobs. It wasn't because he didn't love me. Now I understand why I didn't get all the things that I wanted. Amen? So I encourage you today, children, to take this opportunity to show your love for your father. Men get a bad rap, and maybe some of them earned it. Amen. Let's tell the truth and shame the devil. Some of us ain't did what we were supposed to do. And that's why when you go in a nursing home, your children don't want to have nothing to do with you. Because what you did when you had the opportunity, you chose to go the other way. But I, I'm here to say to you, guard your life. Let God's love flow in you, through you that it may bless others. Amen? Amen. I'm going to open up the doors of the church. <laughs>